Developing new technologies is essential if shipping is to meet climate change targets. But it's both difficult and expensive for individual companies to do it alone. So, Marry UK facilitates collaboration between academics and the private sector and allocates government funding towards research projects. Sarah Lockett reports from Rochester in Kent. Among the stacks of timber piled on the quay at the port of Rochester, staff swing into action unloading the latest arrival, 7,000 cubic metres of wood from Sweden. The forklift trucks move like ants in a coordinated dance. The 16 ships in the Scotline fleet run on marine gas oil, similar to diesel, but the company wants to reduce emissions when the vessels are quayside. Ships like this are coming into ports which, as you can see, are surrounded by houses nowadays. So ports aren't where they used to be, far away, in remote places. They're very close to residential properties and they're right in the sort of town centres now to try and reduce that last mile cost. So there's much more scrutiny and there's much more of an air quality and noise problem. So what we're looking to do is replace the main generator with stored energy, so that's batteries. On board, while the ship's engine runs on diesel, the hotel power, the lights and power sockets run on batteries. So this is the main engine behind you and the main generator, and this is the control panel where it all comes together. It's not an option for the Scotline fleet to plug into shore power yet because it simply isn't available in most ports. The battery option is being developed in partnership with technology company Energy Solutions nearby. The generator is running all the time and a generator is sized on a vessel or a ship to provide peak loads, provide power for a crane for instance. But generally the generator will be operating perhaps at 10 or 15% load which is very inefficient for a generator. So what we're able to do with the energy storage is then store that energy and then when it goes to a low load situation turn the generator off and use the energy that's stored in the batteries. We've got the lithium ion batteries in the bottom, that's the energy storage. And these are the inverters, and they're going to take the energy from the battery and convert that into 230 volts for use to power the hotel loads on the ship. The batteries will be silent and save fuel, emissions and money. Scotline transports almost 25% of the soft wood that comes into the UK, 1.5 million cubic metres a year. The battery project has been enabled by Maritime Research and Innovation UK, known as Marry UK, which brings together academics with industry and government money. We've actually been working on behalf of the UK government's Department for Transport, um, managing research spend uh, where we have run, run competitions around things like clean maritime, maritime research and technology, and we've allocated funding projects across a wide range of companies most of them small medium enterprises, some of them academic institutions, and then we've project managed those through to conclusions where we build up a sort of a body of, of research information. Another ship heads off to catch the tide. Decarbonisation is a complex problem and academics are needed to solve it, according to Professor Mark Spearing, who represents the six university members on the Marry board. The UK has an immensely strong research base, largely held in universities. So to make progress on this complicated systems problem, we need to draw on that. And that involves universities working closely with industry. There absolutely has to be a sense of urgency. Uh, every year that passes without making progress on decarbonisation across society, but in this case in shipping, is an opportunity lost and it contributes to global warming. And there are some technologies that are pretty much ready to go so if we can roll them out at scale, we can really make a difference. Marry UK brings together industry partners with university researchers to solve problems which are being experienced by ships like this. But it's not just a one-way street of knowledge flowing from the academics because the shipping businesses bring to the table their experience and knowledge of the practicalities and constraints of working in this sector. Maritime emission reduction technologies could, could result in economic benefits of over sort of five hundred million pounds a year for the UK. So that, that's a huge opportunity um, for UK industry. We know that smart shipping and autonomy could could reduce the operating costs for, for fleet owners by three to four percent. And UK shipping technology, which is currently worth I think about five billion pounds a year, 
That's expected to be a £13 billion a year market by 2030. So what we can see is in the maritime sector, the use of technology, the focus on carbon reduction is going to drive better performance, better environmental outcomes and, you know, and better operational um, performance. Mary UK funded projects such as this are fostering the next generation of innovations in the shipping sector, which will create a cleaner, greener industry.